So, after the frankly disappointing news yesterday that the new Al Sundan map is being somewhat delayed for the start of Battlefield 5's next chapter, today, community manager Adam Freeman, he returned with some much better news. We got some early details on the patch that's dropping next week for Battlefield 5. But just before we get into those points, this video today is sponsored by Elgato. These guys are the best in the business when it comes to equipment for streaming and recording video games. So whether you're looking to take your stream to the next level with something like the Stream Deck XL or you just want to share some of your awesome gaming moments with the HD60S, Elgato has got you covered. So for more details on their products, click that link at the top of the description. Right then, into these early patch details we go then. Obviously, these points won't cover the entire patch. It's not possible at this stage because DICE don't want to release the information. But these are some of the highlights for sure. I did see some tweets yesterday from Drunksy, Florian, on the Battlefield 5 dev team. And he said there is definitely more to come as well. But first of all, let's talk about some further changes to health and ammo. You might remember a couple of patches back, DICE reintroduced the aura mechanic to medical crates, which is something that Battlefield 5 ditched during its development after the team chose to pursue that more physical approach for the game. Now, considering physicality and attrition, in my opinion, did way more harm than good for Battlefield 5, I was really happy to see DICE take some steps backwards and move back to a system that we all know works quite well. So in this patch, the team is taking things a little bit further. First, players who have selected the medical or ammo crate will now be seen by other players as holding it in their hands. So rather than the gadget just being something that magically spawns out of nowhere, in the third person model, you're going to be able to see somebody holding the crate when they've selected it, which is a nice touch. Secondly, the ammo crate will now have an aura applied to it as well. It didn't get this feature in the last patch, that was only for the medical crate, but the ammo crate is now getting it as well. This means players won't need to directly interact with the crate so they can get their hands on primary or secondary ammo. And this mimics previous games like Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4, where the crates would just passively resupply you when you approach them. The radii of the aura that's applied to the medical crate and now the ammo crate as well, that's being increased to 4 meters, so you won't have to stand right on top of the crate to feel its benefits anymore. And I think this is a really good move considering some of the maps that are coming to Battlefield 5 in the very near future. Those maps are going to include a lot of infantry choke points. Marita, the Greek map that's coming in July, that is an infantry focused map with only transport vehicles on it. And it is narrow in some places, so having a crate down on the ground is going to be really helpful. And then, of course, Operation Underground coming in October. That's going to be a reimagining of Metro. It needs no introduction. If you've played Metro before, you know about the choke points there. So medics and supports will then be able to chuck down crates on corners or just round from the action and resupply their teammates in that general location much more efficiently because the radii of the aura is now quite a bit bigger. And now, if you really want to, you can create your own ammo or heal mobile in Battlefield 5, at least when this patch goes live. The collision behavior of the medical and ammo crates has been changed, so you can stick them onto vehicles. So just chuck it on top of the vehicle and it will just stay there. So that's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> Moving on further down the list of notable changes, we've got a complete rework of the AP mines. Now, these, in the words of DICE, have been a problem child for some time. And you know what? I'd be inclined to agree with that statement. And this update is going to change how they behave and how they activate. Once this update goes live next week, soldiers who've chosen to equip the AP mine on their soldier, they're only going to be able to place two of them down on the ground at any one time. And this, quite frankly, is a huge reduction in power for the AP mines. Previously, and currently still at the moment, as this video is live before the patch, you can place down multiple AP mines right across the map that you're playing on, and they will stay there until they get exploded. So you can have as many on the ground, really, as you like. And you can die and respawn and put more of them down. So having it limited to just two AP mines, that is a massive nerf on its own. 
On top of that, DICE is implementing a new proximity limit to the game, and that means AP mines are not going to be able to be placed within 3.6 meters of one another. And again, that should massively help reduce the power of the AP mines, and it should help remove that double impact scenario. You know where one AP mine goes off and then you get damaged, and then the second one right next to it goes off, exploding from the first one, and then it kills you because you haven't had time to heal up? That's really frustrating in Battlefield 5, and this sort of proximity limit, where they're much further away from each other, that should now mean that that double impact doesn't happen so much. It's a real issue recently that's popped up with the new Outpost game mode, where enemies just sort of like to leave them hidden quite close to the base of radio towers. So to see this proximity limit come in, I'm really happy about that. The activation timer of the AP mines is increasing as well, so now as a player on the receiving end of an AP mine, you're going to have a slightly longer window of time to react before that blast actually goes off. It's an increase of about 0.3 seconds, up to 1 second in total. That might not sound like a lot of time, but it is a big enough window to get another button press in, and that could potentially save you from death, and that button press is likely going to be prone, because now you can prone down underneath the blast since the blast point is being changed and moved up a bit. So if you hear that ping of the AP mine go off, just hit prone, hit the ground, and you'll take way less damage after this patch is deployed. But DICE isn't quite done there. That is a lot of nerfs for the AP mines. I will say that is quite a significant downgrade. So to kind of compensate for that a little bit, DICE is slightly increasing the activation radius of the mine. So you now don't have to be right on top of it to activate it. It will activate from a little bit further away. And the blast radius is being increased as well. And DICE is doing this to try and make sure that AP mines are still quite dangerous, but they will be dangerous in a different way to before this patch. Now, I know that some players aren't really very happy about this AP mine change, but from my point of view, they've become an absolute nuisance in the game. In their current form, players are just taking advantage of the fast-paced infantry gameplay, and they're placing them in areas where it's almost impossible to react in time to their incoming damage. So overall, these changes do look like a nerf, despite those buffs to the blast radius, but I think AP mines are going to change somewhat. They're now going to be this sort of area denial tool rather than a trap mechanic. They've basically become a rat trap in Battlefield 5 at the moment, so I'm happy to see them change. Next up, DICE is also making some significant changes to how explosive launcher gadgets work against infantry specifically. They're going to massively reduce the spam ability and bring their power down somewhat. You're going to notice substantially less one-hit kills from launchers like the Piat and the Frag Rifle once this patch goes live. No details have really been given yet, but we can assume that the splash damage of these gadgets has been scaled right back against infantry, and perhaps only direct hits will now result in that one-hit kill. The ability to throw back grenades fired from the Assault Class's Frag Rifle has been added to the game as well, and that says to me that DICE is going to change how the gadget works. Currently, there's a very small delay after that grenade hits something for the explosion to occur, so if the ability to throw that grenade away has been added to the game, then the detonation timer of the Frag Rifle has to have been increased somewhat, and that's going to give players a chance to throw that grenade somewhere else and avoid the damage. So. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out in live matches. It's quite a significant change for a gadget that is quite popular in the game at the moment. And the hit detection of incendiary grenades has been improved with this patch as well. DICE said that we should expect less spontaneous combustion to occur during matches now, which is, of course, quite welcome. Then I've got a couple of points to talk about when it comes to reviving players and that man down screen. If you're clicking or holding to bleed out, the timer for that has now been reduced to just 2.5 seconds. So you're going to be able to skip back to the spawn screen quite a bit faster to make changes to your loadout if that's what you want to do. This reduction in time, however, on the man down screen, that doesn't reduce the overall time before you're able to respawn. So. If you skip back to the spawn screen, you're still going to have to wait there longer instead of staying in the man down screen and waiting for a revive. And if you are choosing to hold on for a revive, that timer has now been increased to a maximum of 25.6 seconds. So that's going to give you more time to be picked up 
if action is happening nearby and maybe a medic gets distracted or something. There are also some changes happening in the Firestorm Battle Royale game mode with this patch as well, which I know will excite some players out there, but perhaps not many players at all. Never mind. Finally, after three months of no weapon skins in the mode, but weapon skins that were part of the chapter rewards clearly being meant for Firestorm, you know, like Napalm and Cinder, they've got something to do with fire, the mode will now have weapon skins enabled on the guns that you can loot from the Halvoy map. The skins on the weapons, they're going to reflect the choices that you've made in your company. So now that I found that out, I'm going to immediately switch all of the guns that I can to a combination of the Napalm and Cinder skins and just go for that Firestorm theme. It's something that I found really, really odd when Firestorm launched that, you know, Battle Royale is all about cosmetic customization when it comes to characters and Firestorm didn't have any weapon skins in it. So it was really odd to start with, but it's nice to see that DICE have finally made that change. The Commando Carbine, the VGO, and the LS26, they're being added to the loot table in Firestorm as well. So three new weapons to try and get a V for victory with. And Manual Leaning will now also be available in Firestorm as well after being added to the main game in the last major patch. And sticking with the theme of game modes for just a second, Team Deathmatch is getting a little bit of a switch up in the next patch on some of the maps. Aerodrome, Narvik, Fiel and Devastation, they're all being changed with new combat zone locations. We're going to get some more details on these changes next week, but the overall goal here with changing the map locations is to provide a more consistent, intense experience across all maps supported for the TDM game mode. The sizes of the combat zones on these four maps is being reduced to increase tension, so we'll have to see how that plays out next week. And lastly, some more general fixes. Changes have been made to the currently disabled Frontlines game mode, including round length, reductions to the ping pong effect, you know, where you bounce back and forward between just a couple of flags. Apparently, that's been improved. They're also improving accessibility to the mode, and they're going to be changing vehicle spawning mechanics to ensure vehicles always reach the shifting front line faster. So DICE seems to be making good on their promise of trying to improve Frontlines and just make it a better game mode before they bring it back, so that's quite nice. The super annoying plane bug engine noise that's been pissing me the hell off since the launch of the Mercury map is going to be fixed with this patch, which makes me a very happy gamer. The boys' AT rifle is getting an extra round in its magazine, making the max ammo capacity of the rifle a 5 plus 1, instead of a 4 plus 1 and bipod detection has supposedly been improved again with this patch so be on the lookout for more people camping with their bipods on the ground. That's just great. Now you'll notice that I haven't mentioned anything about the poor performance of the game or the stuttering that's been plaguing the title for the last month, 6 weeks, 8 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever. Nothing was mentioned in this early look at the patch but Community manager Adam Freeman did state in a reply to a question on Reddit that there will be changes within the patch that point towards improving the performance of the game, but the team doesn't want to outright say that they fixed the stuttering problem straight away since the patch isn't out in the wild on all those different systems that gamers use. Basically, they don't want to set the expectation that it has been fixed when in fact that may not be the case. So I guess it's better safe than sorry. Overall though, that's a pretty meaty patch for Battlefield 5, and there is still hope right now, at least, that the Alson Dam map could be able to launch on June 27th on time for the smaller game modes to avoid that game-breaking crash that we spoke about yesterday. If you missed that video, I've linked it down in the description for you. But you guys should let me know what you think of this patch. It's scheduled to drop next week, probably on Tuesday, but leave me your opinions down below in the comments section. Until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.